Okay, welcome back to part two. So the other interesting thing about um, resistors in series is that if we connect them like this, okay, like uh, you see here, the actual total resistance becomes actually quite high, okay, or much larger than if they were connected in parallel like this. The way I tell students is, you know, kind of like uh, if you've got a classroom, or sorry, if you've got a narrow corridor, and you've got literally well the width of, of a of, of, of one one student and then you've got um, and the three students three students in a row okay and the person's got to try and get through all three of them okay but it's a narrow corridor okay and there's only one way to pass through them okay as opposed to now we've got three corridors okay and there is one student in each of them um, now this time as each electron or, or just the students just got to bypass one student okay as they make their way to the other side of the electron it means the effective resistance that the total uh, electrons have to pass through actually does lessen okay it does actually decrease okay if you do a level physics you'll find out why uh, why this is the case but that's just one one nice way that um, you can arrange your resistors to to reduce the effective resistance of of your circuit okay one thing you you should know okay is the total resistance in series is you can work work out the total resistance by adding the individual resistors okay uh, followed by this equation here the total current is going to be the same okay wherever you put your ammeter in the circuit the voltage okay will be the um if you add v1 plus v2 plus v3 so it's the addition of the individual voltages across each of the resistors and that's for a series circuit for a parallel circuit you don't need to know how resistances are, are added up okay but you do need to know that the voltage across the battery here will equal the voltage across one loop or a certain amount of electrical components in one loop in this case there's just one so it's um, uh, V1 which is going to be the voltage across the battery and that's also going to be V2 and V3 okay like this equation states the current is going to be split so as I told you before we've got three amps here that's going to be split three ways so it's going to be one amp one amp one amp and then that's going to uh, become one amp sorry three amps again so the other thing you need to know is if we added bulbs okay one after the other in a, in a series circuit they would actually get dimmer okay however if we added the same amount of bulbs in parallel okay kind of like these resistors are arranged their brightness would stay the same because this rule suggests that the voltage across each branch is going to be the same as the original voltage across the battery or cell okay so please make a note of that at this point here okay okay so we've said that voltage affects current but how could we investigate that okay in an actual experiment okay so we could set up something like this so we can have a battery or a power pack okay uh, which will obviously pass our electrons around a circuit uh, we can connect up um, some wires to to a, to a light bulb uh, put, put a, 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 a voltmeter across it and then an ammeter um, on, on that series circuit as well okay but what we're going to do is we're going to put this variable resistor in our circuit okay and then what what's that going to do well we can alter the resistance that it has which means the current is going to be reduced because they remember they're inversely proportional which means the voltage that we're going to measure across this light bulb is also going to change and if we um, change the values of our variable resistor and this is a, a, a lamp we would get a curve that looks like this okay so at a certain point when we've got a high enough current okay um, our voltage will essentially come to a peak voltage okay so it's not going to effectively continue to rise because what's going to happen as current increases the amount of collisions the electrons uh, have with the atoms okay in, in the wire okay we're going to get a larger temperature rise due to friction and essentially we're going to get um, the, the current actually being reduced as well okay due to to the high temperatures the electrons are going to struggle to get to the other to, to the opposite end of the battery so that is the reason why this 
cur we see this curving effect here. Okay, and and the and, and the same thing happens uh, if we go the other way. I mean, all, all that's happening here, guys, is essentially we're switching the terminals uh, on either side of the battery, which means we get the same um, curve going the the opposite way. Okay, the same effect is happening. Now, if we replace the light bulb with a resistor, a fixed resistor, okay, so that's just a rectangle box with no diagonal line, we would get this shape here, okay? If we did the same experiment, we would get this shape here, okay? So, um, a fixed resistor, the reason why this is the case, because remember, V is equal to I times R, okay, which means R is equal to um, V over I, so we, we are going to have a constant ratio of voltage um, divided by current um, in a fixed resistor. So that's the reason why this is going to be a straight line, okay? Now for a diode, remember the symbol, okay, so you can go back um, to, to the start of this video, but a diode will have this shape because it means current can only flow in one direction, okay? So notice there is no current um, down here in the, neg in the negative direction, okay, because it only allows current to flow in one direction. And the reason why it flows in one direction is because there's a very high resistance on the other side um, of the diode, which, which just prevents the current getting past it, okay? So, for your exams, you need to be able to sketch these graphs, you need to be able to identify which graphs belong to which component, okay, a resistor, a filament lamp, or a diode. You need to be able to explain them, okay? So I'm going to, you know, you can pause the video, you can read these points, but essentially, um, you know, I've, I've described what each graph does. I suppose uh, one, 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 one important thing to mention is the steepness of the graph tells us the resistance, okay? So um, if we've obviously got a steeper line like this, okay, that means we're going to get, it requires a lower voltage to pass to, in order for a higher current uh, to, to, to pass through the the, um, the wires, okay? Whereas if the line was like this, it means for the same amount of voltage, we're going to get a, a lower current, okay? So uh, make sure you, you're comfortable with understanding that effect, okay, or that relationship. So remember, I was going to tell you um, how does an LDR and a thermistor work? Well, as the light levels increase, okay, the resistance of a light dependent resistor also decreases, okay? So this is a sort of curve, so it's a sort of exponential curve, okay? Um, so just just be bear in mind that. And, and the way I, 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 I tell students to remember this is a light dependent resistor, okay? So what is it dependent? It is dependent upon light. So, and then you just need to remember as whatever the, um, it's dependent on as that increases the opposite happens for the resistance okay the same thing for a resistor sorry for a thermistor what does the thermistor depend on well it depends on the external te temperature and if temperature increases the resistance will also increase okay so we see both it, it follows the same pattern as the LDR um, so as temperature increases the resistance will also increase Okay, so you need to be able to state what both do. Okay, so let's look at this next question. It says, describe how to use a circuit in 10.16, okay, which is this one here, and other standard pieces of equipment to investigate how the resistance of an LDR changes with light intensity or brightness. Okay, so, you know, obviously we're going to replace our, um, our lamp with an LDR. We're still... Uh, and also we're going to take uh, out our variable resistor because this time we're going to have um, another lamp, okay, connected to another circuit and essentially we're going to shine, uh, we're gonna, sorry, we're going to have the lamp turned on and our independent variable is obviously going to be the distance, so what we're going to change is the distance um, from that LDR. So we could start off with 10 centimeters first of all, okay, record the voltmeter reading and the ampere reading. Um, note it down in our in our in our table. Change the distance again. Twenty centimeters. Do the same. Thirty centimeters. Forty centimeters, and so on. Okay, so we we have a, a we we we're changing the distance, and we're going to record the respective voltage and current values. Then we can use V equals I times R. Okay, so um, to give us the resistance, so we we jot down the resist resistances, and essentially we should get a graph. 
that resembles this, okay? And obviously the light levels will be dependent on the distance. So that's how we can do it with that. Um, we can do the same thing with the thermistor, okay? But this time our independent variable is gonna be um, the external temperature, okay? So we're gonna have the same setup, okay? Take the variable resistor out. We're gonna have a thermistor, which we can place in different beakers of water. So we could have one with lots and lots of ice. We could have another one at room temperature. You know, and then we could have another one with some slightly warmer water, okay, and then some really, really hot water. So, you know, or you could have you could have water baths, um, so you could have your technicians set the water baths to distinct temperatures, so 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on. But essentially, each time, you're going to record the voltmeter reading, the ammeter reading, uh, again, rearrange V equals I times R, so V over I gives you the resistance, uh, and then you can plot your resistance against your temperature and you should get something similar to this graph here okay so again you know just bear in mind in an, in the exam they could ask you to describe any of these experiments and you need to be able to uh, logically um, explain how to do them so as i mentioned when current flows through a resistor it transfers energy as heat okay so obviously uh, you know, we, we state current, the, the flow of current, sort of kind of like electrical energy uh, being present in, in the circuit. Um, however, um, you know, uh, they are electrons, they do crash into atoms, and obviously there is friction, and we will get some heat. Okay, and obviously we've mentioned this, haven't we? Um, the heat obviously will get passed to the surroundings, um, and obviously that will warm the air around it. Okay, so that's obviously going to be the wasted form of energy.